Hello there. This is Ashley, a technical writer with the documentation team at cPanel, the hosting platform of choice. I'm going to show you how to use our email deliverability interface. This was previously our authentication interface, but we've renamed this to more clearly describe its purpose and functionality. We've also made some changes that make it much easier to manage your domain's DKIM, SPF, and reverse DNS records. But what are these records, and what purpose do they serve a domain? Well, DKIM, or Domain Keys Identified Mail, verifies the sender and the integrity of a message. SPF, or Sender Policy Framework, verifies that the message your domain send originated from a listed server. Reverse DNS, or PTR records, are DNS records that resolve an IP address to a domain or hostname. The system uses PTR records to perform a reverse DNS lookup to retrieve the associated domain or hostname. When you properly configure your records, it improves the chances that your email is not treated as spam by other servers. Why don't we check out that new email deliverability interface? First, let's log into our cPanel account. The cPanel interface will appear. On our cPanel interface, let's select Email Deliverability from the Email section. The Email Deliverability interface will appear. Here we can view the current status of our domain's DKIM, SPF, and reverse DNS records. The domain column lists all of our domains. The main domain label here identifies that this was the domain that our hosting provider used to create our account. The Email Deliverability Status column displays the status of each domain's DKIM, SPF, and reverse DNS records, whether valid or invalid. When our records are properly configured, the system displays a valid status message. When there is a problem with the record, the system will display it here. For example, our main domain currently has some record issues that require our attention. The final column here provides the repair and manage options for our domains. Let's click Repair. The system displays the repair interface. This feature lets us quickly address any problems with our domain's records. It allows the system to repair a domain's invalid records with its recommended changes. Note that this option is unavailable if the system does not control the domain's DNS records. In that case, you'll have to contact the person responsible for that domain's name servers and ask them to update the records for you. We can review the system's recommendations for any invalid records, copy information, customize the suggested SPF record, or download our private key before approving any changes. Once we click Repair, the system proceeds with checking the repaired records to ensure that the changes are valid. For now, let's click Cancel. The Manage feature lets us manage a domain's records. Why don't we check it out? Let's click Manage for our main domain. The system directs us to the Manage the Domain interface. This interface displays the status of a domain's DKIM, SPF, and reverse DNS records. Each section provides the Copy feature, which allows us to copy the provided information to our computer's clipboard. If you use this functionality, don't forget to paste that copied information somewhere. The system only stores the most recent information copied. In the DKIM section, we can view the DKIM record's name and value information. This section also provides the Download the Private Key link. When we click this, the system directs us to the Download the Private Key interface. Note the interface warning here. If others obtain your private DKIM key, they could sign emails and impersonate you as a sender. This is a potential security risk, so always be sure that you provide your private DKIM key to a trusted user. For now, let's click Go Back and return to the Manage a Domain interface. Let's click Install the suggested record. A confirmation window will appear. Note the warning here. If you send email from another server, you must use the new DKIM record on that server. So if you modify your DKIM record here, make sure that you update your remote server's records too. Let's click Cancel. Next, we have the SPF section. The Suggested SPF Text Record section here displays the system's recommendation for a valid SPF record. We can copy the record's name or the SPF record from the value text boxes. If we want to modify our SPF record, we can click Customize under the value text box. Let's click Customize. 
the Customize an SPF Record interface will appear. On this interface, the system displays our current record, if one exists, and the system's record recommendations. Currently, we don't have an SPF record. In the Domain Settings section here, we can modify our record's additional hosts and additional MX servers. Additional hosts allow the server to approve any other hosts we define. By default, the system automatically includes the primary mail exchanger, or MX, and any servers you've created an MX record for. We won't have to include those in our record, but for this tutorial, why don't we add another host? Click Add a new host plus a item. A new text box will appear. Let's enter mail.example.com in the text box. Next, we have additional MX servers. This allows the server to approve all MX entries for each domain we've specified to send mail. Click Add a new plus MX item. A new text box will appear. For this tutorial, let's enter example.com. The IP address settings section allows us to define a range of IPv4 or IPv6 address blocks. You can provide this information in either IP address or classless interdomain routing, or CIDR, format. For this tutorial, let's enter another IPv4 address. Click Add a new IP4 item. A new text box will appear. Let's enter 10.0.0.1 in the text box. Finally, we have the additional settings section. The include list lets us define any hosts that we want to include in our record. So if we use a service such as Comcast.com, MailChimp.com, or Google.com, we would want to include that here. For this tutorial, let's add Google services to our suggested record. Click Add a new plus include item. A new text box will appear. Enter Google.com in the text box. The Exclude All Other Hosts section defines whether we want to prevent a host from sending our domain's mail. Note that if you enable this setting, the SPF record will automatically fail any undefined hosts. This means that the SPF record only respects the host defined in your record. So if you're experiencing forgery with the domain, this might be the option for you. Forgery, or email spoofing, can result in a lot of emails bouncing back and getting redirected. This option can help to decrease the volume of bounce back emails you receive. Too many bounced emails can overwhelm a mail server and reduce its performance. By default, the system generally recommends the tilde all authorization. This authorization means that mail from a server that isn't defined in our plus A and plus include settings is marked as suspicious or spam. For now, let's stick with the system's recommendation. We will leave this unchecked. Now that we have modified our record, we can view our changes here in the preview of the updated record section. Let's go ahead and save our modified SPF record. Click Install a Customized SPF Record. The system confirms that it has saved our record. Click Go Back. The Reverse DNS PTR section displays our domain's current PTR name and value entries. When a problem exists, depending on the record's configuration, this section will advise how best to fix the problem. This includes issues such as a misconfigured record or if the system is sending mail from a private IP address. This section may require the assistance of your hosting provider. If you cannot resolve a problem with your PTR record, follow the provided instructions on the interface. Also, this section may be unavailable if your hosting provider has enabled smart hosting, but that's okay. Smart hosts are email servers that allow external parties' emails to be forwarded to the email server of the email recipient. With this enabled, you don't need to worry about your domain's PTR records. Let's click Go Back to return to the email deliverability interface. Thank you for watching. I've included a link to our interface documentation in the video description below. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel so that you're up to date with our tutorial and video releases. If you'd like more information about cPanel, visit us at cPanel.com or follow at cPanel on Twitter. And while you're there, let us know what tutorials you'd like to see. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.